discuss the similarities and differences in the chemical properties of elements in the same group. There is Dr. Atkinson. Well, group 1 and group 7 are the ones the IB specifically asks about. So group 1, that's the alkali metals, one valence electron. And we're going to look at lithium, sodium and potassium and their relative reactivity with water. Well, I'll spoil it for you a bit. Lithium is the least reactive with water, although they all react in a similar manner. The valence electron in lithium is attracted to the nucleus more than the valence electron in sodium or potassium. So the valence electron in lithium doesn't really want to come off relative to sodium and potassium. And so it's going to be less reactive. OK, I'm trying to do a fair experiment. So let me put three blocks of sodium onto the bottom of the boat. Oh, bit of a splash, didn't, didn't react. That was lucky. And finally, potassium. So the valence electron in potassium is the furthest of the three from the pull of the nucleus. So that electron is easy to remove. It's the lowest electronegativity, the lowest first ionization energy as well. So it should be the most reactive. All righty, three blocks on each. They're levitating above the water. Hope Dr. Atkinson will be okay. Let's drop them in. Oh, not as dramatic as I'd hoped. Ah, but you can see that the far boat, which is potassium, that's the most reactive, and that's providing the most push. Let me have a little swim along. Ah, yes, I can see bubbles coming out. So the alkali metals react with water to produce bubbles of colourless hydrogen. Oh, Dr. Atkinson seems to have a huge lump of potassium with him. Oh, dear me. That's unfortunate. Could have been worse. Could have been francium. Oh, and the potassium is reacting, the most reactive of the three metals we've looked at, producing hydrogen, which is propelling Dr. Atkinson into the distance. We need to know the pairing of these reactivities as well. So lithium and iodine, well, that is the least reactive pairing of those. And the most reactive, well, that's the potassium and the chlorine. Richard Feynman, one of my two heroes, the other being Douglas Adams, was the only man to watch the first atomic bomb test with his own eyes. Everyone else turned away, but he sat behind the windshield of a truck and he hoped that that would protect him from the incident UV radiation. And so in homage to Dr Feynman, I too will now sit behind that truck. Francium and fluorine, what a bang. Francium's the most reactive metal, fluorine the most reactive non-metal, exciting. All right then, let's do some boring board work. So I'm going to highlight the groups. The groups are the vertical columns in the periodic table and elements within a group behave in a similar fashion. Uh, an element, for example, in group two, all of them have two valence electrons and it's the valence electrons, the outside electrons that govern the chemical properties of an element. So that's why they behave in a similar fashion because they have the same number of valence electrons. The OB wants you to know about the trend in reactivity down group one. As you go down group one, the reactivity increases. So francium's the most reactive. Francium's the most reactive because in group one, it's the biggest one. And metals want to lose electrons, and the valence electron in francium is furthest from the pull of the nucleus, so it can be easily removed. And as you go up group seven, the reactivity increases. So that's the opposite pattern. As you go up group 7, the reactivity increases, which gives you fluorine as the most reactive element in group 7. That's because uh, if you have a lone electron and all the halogens love electrons, the electron would much rather go to fluorine because it can get closer to the positive nucleus there. It's the smallest atom in group 7. So the three sorts of reactions we need to know. First of all, reactions of the alkali metals in water. So you saw that before. Uh, the alkali metal reacts with water to form the hydroxide and hydrogen gas. Don't forget to balance it out. I've not put the state symbols in because I'm being a bit lazy, but you probably have to. Uh, lithium hydroxide, that's a strong base, and if you dissolve it in water, it's being a strong alkali. Group 1 hydroxide's a strong basis. And hydrogen gas is produced each time. You can remember that because the boat was fizzing along with hydrogen gas. Now, since lithium, sodium, and potassium are all in the same group, they're going to have a similar chemistry. In fact, the equations are pretty much identical. I'm just going to swap out the metal from group one for another metal in group one. 
Now the chemistry isn't the same because uh, the reactivity's slightly different. Lithium's the least reactive, it just goes fizz, sodium goes bang, and potassium goes boom. Just when you think it's not going to explode, it normally does. Alrighty, so the IB also wants you to compare these six elements' reactivities. Those three with those three. The least reactive pairing, well that would be lithium with iodine. The least reactive, lithium and iodine. And the most reactive pairing, well that would be potassium with chlorine. Now more reactive pairings are available, but those are the ones specifically mentioned in the syllabus. And at this stage in chemistry, you don't really have the tools to understand the full reason. So I'll just give you a, a partial reason. So halogens with halide ions. Just remember, the most reactive ends up as an iron. 99% of the time, that's true in chemistry. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's look at an example. Uh, bromine, that's red. And iodide ions, they're colourless. Now, there's two things that could happen here. The first thing is that nothing happens. It's red stays red, nothing happens. The second thing is that I could make purple iodine and the bromide ion, which is colourless. Now how do I know which of these is true? The most reactive ends up as an iron. Bromine's more reactive than iodine, and so in the bottom equation, yet, yeah, bromine has ended up as an iron. Bromine's the most reactive. It's higher in the halogens. Now let's balance that out. You do need to know the colours. Bromine is brown, we saw that, but chlorine's green and iodine's purple. And the, the ions, the halide ions, are all colourless. Not white, colourless. But I can't draw in colourless. Because you couldn't see it. Another sort of question, is this possible? Bromine and chloride? Is it going to do that? Is it going to turn from red to green? Does the most reactive end up as an iron? Well, what's more reactive, bromine or chlorine? Chlorine's more reactive. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No. Chlorine's the most reactive. It's highest in the halogens. And that doesn't end up as an iron. So no, that, that won't work. It won't turn from red to green. It's not going to work. And finally, what about this one? Chlorine and iodide. Does that make chloride and iodine? Will it turn from green to purple if I mix all this up? Yeah, that'll work. Chlorine's more reactive than iodine. It's higher in the halogens. So it's possible. Chlorine turns to chloride. The most reactive ends up as an iron. Oh, I never bothered to change my phone ring from the original Nokia. Excuse me. Oh, it all has to be aqueous.